Hello, so I'm going to introduce our first speaker and have him come up. So it's Dr. Kevin Wu, who is the principal material scientist uh, at ThermoCalc. So we're going to hear about CalFed technique, which is a phase-based approach to modeling and underlying thermodynamics and phase equilibrium for equilibria for multi-component alloy systems. So I'll let him take it from here. And Okay, thanks. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Ke Kevin Wu. I'm from Thermocac Software Inc., uh, located in Pittsburgh. Um, uh, I come here on behalf of Paul Mason, who is the president of uh, Thermocac Software Inc. Here, he cannot make it before, because he's on vacation. And before he was notified for this uh, wonderful chance for us to come here, so I come here on behalf of him. So I also like to thank my colleague uh, back in uh, my ho our headquarters in Sweden, uh, Chin Dr. Chin Chen, Joanne Bradberg, and Anders Anstrom uh, from Thermocac Software AB, uh, located in uh, Stockholm, Sweden. And Anders Anstrom is uh, actually the president of our uh, software company. So my topic to, uh, today is about uh, CAFAT method as a critical component of a data infrastructure for ICME and MGI. So some of you may know about our software company, Thermocac, and we know that uh, our company is actually uh, develop software tools and the databases uh, based on what we call the CAFAT method. So this method has been involved for about 30 years. Uh, if you look at back, it's more than 40 years for, uh, from the starting point. So, but it's uh, over 30 years to working as a uh, alloy development uh, cycle, so to design and design materials. So, all the software and the database have been involved for quite a long time. Uh, so, today I will look, uh, first we should introduction about what uh, CAFAD is and how it fit into the, the current uh, thriving society of ICME and MGI. Uh, so, and then we give a brief uh, uh, talk about the history, history of our careful based software tools and uh, what the future should look like and also talk about thing about the databases, of course. And uh, what we want to emphasize is some of the challenges we are facing, uh, especially for database developments throughout these years and, uh, and also for ongoing projects. And uh, also we hope that we can get benefits from other data, uh, data infrastructures. So first, uh, many people uh, can be more familiar with kind of triangle, uh, microstructure property and processing triangle. Uh, actually, we want to add another kind of corner to pick the prism, that's a chemical uh, chemistry. That's what really, what uh, the CAFAD is working on. So we try to understand what alloy chemistry can, be, can affect the microstructure and property and processing conditions. So CAFAD is uh, previously uh, originates come from the acronym of CAFAD calculation or phase diagrams. So it's a society here, uh, and it started with uh, in the 1970s. Uh, I think actually it's the studies from the, uh, the developed method by Larry Kaufman from MIT, and gradually we uh, grew up as a society to generate the phase equilibrium and uh, phase diagram data. Uh, for industrial use. Uh, since 1980s, we have uh, a bunch of uh, software like uh, Thermocalc and uh, Lucas program, or uh, later on I have, a com for example, Campbell Therm. So we develop some software and the databases so industrial can use this, uh, use this to uh, develop their alloys. So provide a bunch of information like a phase information, thermodynamic information, and kinetic information uh, for users to use. So the basic idea is to capture the composition, temperature, and pressure dependence. Uh, so we based this kind of phase-based approach. So we develop different uh, the Gibbs range, for example, for different phases, and we build up databases. And from that, and then we use uh, some theoretical background like a Gibbs range, uh, uh, Gibbs theorem, or phase transformation theory, to provide information uh, like composition, temperature, and pressure dependence. Uh, of different uh, phases and also phase uh, relations, uh, et cetera. 
So we have a regular uh, journal uh, called CAFAT. It's published regularly, and uh, so actually we have uh, active uh, participants for throughout the world. So for ICME, is the Integrate uh, Computational Materials and Engineering. Uh, this initiative uh, published, uh, is released in uh, 2008. So it's gradually become, as me, it's developed very fast uh, in recent years to become a very uh, active society. So the basic word here is uh, integrate and uh, engineering. So it's try to integrate uh, multiple uh, in computational math uh, models. Uh, from uh, down from the subatomic scale to up to uh, a production scale uh, to try to integrate it as a holistic system uh, that uh, we can use it in the regular uh, alloy development to try to shift uh, this kind of concept from the trial error kind of experiment uh, technique to some more kind of computational oriented uh, math uh, technology. So the keywords are integrate and engineering, and also the key, uh, database is a very is the key components uh, in the system. So, so many people know the MGI is a materials general initiative that been launched by White House in 20, uh, 2011. Uh, actually, this uh, uh, the purpose of this one is to try to double the speed of alloy development and materials innovation cycle. So the core of this MGI is kind of uh, three kind of integrated parts. The efficient high throughput computational tools and high throughput experimental uh, techniques and also digital data informatics. So the three are combined together uh, to build up the materials innovation infrastructure. So if you look at that, actually McCaffrey is kind of a nexus of this kind of MGI. So in his unique way, because uh, CAFAT has a lot of uh, very close relation with the uh, database, uh, with the experiment data. So then the database that build up is considered as the digital data. Although we don't have really enough knowledge about the data informatics uh, from a computational perspective, but we, we base our database based on the kind of a material science theory, like uh, thermodynamics and the phase transformation. So based on that, we develop some computational tools that can be very efficiently actually provide the data for the industrial use. Okay. So give some brief idea of the CalFET. So first, I've been thinking that we collect all the data, either from the theory, like quantum mechanics, statistics, and also kind of the FT calculations to generate some thermodynamic data. And also we get from experiments like a DTA, color, uh, DFT and uh, X-ray diffraction, atom probe, et cetera, et cetera, to collect all the thermodynamic information, like enthalpy, entropy, Gibbs range, and the phase equivalent data. So we collect all this data together to build up kind of physical-based uh, models. The model for thermodynamics, just like uh, thermodynamic uh, Gibbs range, uh, for mobility or kinetics, that's kind of atomic mobility databases for diffusion. So we build up these data and with, with some uh, parameters that can be f uh, fit uh, to the experiment data. So then we store this all the data as the Gibbs free energy and uh, atomic mobility into the databases. So then we use the uh, advanced uh, kind of computational software tool with a very advanced uh, algorithm to provide all this data to the industrial use either to directly get a phase information, uh, like a phase fraction, phase equilibrium, and uh, matrix composition, et cetera, or they can build, up, build on their own model uh, with, our, with our kind of SDK tools. Okay. So if you look at this in the ICME framework, CAFAT can be as an important bridge to model common room. Um, prediction. So we we can allow the like, micro scale. So we can collect data from a first, for example, first model calculations. Then we can provide can can we collect all the data like uh, uh, Gibbs free energy data, uh, enthalpy data, 
interface energy data, volume, elastic constant data, et cetera, to build up databases. Then we provide the software to, pro uh, to provide this data to the upscale kind of calculation like a phase, phase field method, uh, diffusion transformation uh, calculation or language Schwartz type infield uh, approach to uh, precipitation kinetics. And based on that, we can move up to another scale to for the uh, like FEM or uh, fluid dynamics calculations, etc. So this is a slide that's uh, provided by uh, Dr. Professor Greg Oxen with Northwestern University, who is also the founder of the Questech Innovation uh, Company, uh, who is, which is the lead, actually is the leader right now in the CME. Uh, society for using the computational can integrate tools to design alloys uh, uh, in, a, in a way that uh, in this kind of a so-called hierarchical kind of a structure to design the materials and it's a safety, uh, I think it's specifically invent a, a series of uh, iron and steel uh, alloys. So if you look at this uh, hierarchical a uh, hierarchical st structure, they start from the low scale like uh, materials, uh, genome uh, tools, uh, up to ICMD like uh, eyesight optimization kind of tools. So from the computational uh, tools in the left side and the database as uh, the right side. So down the screen you can see that actually in the MGI kind of tools in the bottom of this diagram, so actually they provide, first they generate the proto data. It's the data for prototype system. So they collect the experimental data, um, DFT data, and they use the tools to generate this data. And this data has been processed and they stored as database using the course so called, that's uh, what we call the Kafka method to develop a database using a software like Thermal Calc and Dictra to develop a database. So I think in the sense of their kind of development, Kafka is actually just MGI for them. I mean, uh, in, the, in, in the sense for that. So they develop a database uh, from uh, so using the, uh, in the MGI regime, they move up to the next, next level to the SCME region. Then they develop some many kinds of models to uh, understand the pro uh, process structure and the structure property models. So in that case, there's also used like uh, software tools like a thermal crack and a teacher. So for thermal calc to provide phase transformation information like a drying force and the phase equilibrium information and for diction for the, like a, that's a diffusion uh, for diffusion control the transformation. So if in that case you get a, a atomic abilities and um, using this information they can build up the models like a phase transformation models like for one side is, uh, starting temperature and also for zener painting or preserving um, uh, presentation uh, modeling is for that, uh, based on information. So you can see that uh, the CAFA can actually play a very critical role in their development uh, of, the, uh, of the alloys. Okay. So the, the CAFA based tools that uh, developing our company is uh, have uh, three kind of uh, branches. Uh, first of all, is a flagship uh, software, of course, called Thermocalc, uh, which is the, basically the thermodynamic calculations. And we have another software tool called Dictra, the diffusion control, the transformation. So this kind of diffusion-based uh, uh, tool. So recently, we developed uh, called the TC Prisma. Uh, it's uh, developed for presentation kinetics. So for uh, Kafka-based uh, software, the Thermocalc, uh, is a, as mentioned, is a flagship of the software. So it's back in the it's developed back, back in the 1980s. So this, the purpose of this software is for thermodynamic and phase equilibrium uh, calculations. So they can calculate the uh, stable and metastable heterogeneous uh, phase equilibrium uh, for multi-component, multi-phase multi systems. And the information can provide like among the composition phases. So that's really important information uh, to design the processing conditions and the tr other transformation temperatures like liquidus, uh, solidus temperatures. Uh, also can predict the, the drying forces for phase transformation, either diffusion or the uh, diffusion is uh, phase transformations. The provide phase diagrams, uh, binary, ternary, 
isothermal, isopathal, uh, different uh, type of uh, phase diagrams informations. And also uh, recently we also introduced uh, other kind of uh, information like more volume, uh, then density, and uh, thermal expansion. And uh, there's a lot of module called, uh, we can do some uh, certification simulation like shell uh, calculations. Um, a lot of some chemi um, chemical data, such as enthalpy, capacity, uh, heat capacity, and activities. So all the information for the uh, important for certification uh, process. So also we have some uh, some of the properties for chemical uh, reactions. Okay. So all this information can be very helpful and very efficient to provide for uh, users to design, optimize the uh, alloy, and also for the processes. So for dictress diffusion control, the model component diffusion. So in addition to thermal dynamics, uh, for this problem we introduce more collective uh, issues. So we build up a lot of database called atomic mobile database to some kind of uh, simulate the diffusion uh, process during the processing uh, conditions. So uh, there's a wide, uh, wide application for this uh, software, like a carburization and decarburization process. Uh, Microsegregation uh, during certification and the uh, homogenization process after that, and uh, precipitate growth and the dissolution uh, to uh, simulate, for example, copper dissolution during the solution heaterments, and precipitate coarsening, and also for coating substrate kind of an interdiffusion process to help design the coating materials and how, how to understand how the interaction between the coating and the substrate, for example, for uh, aerospace and uh, nickel based superalloy uh, applications. And there's, uh, of course, there's a lot of uh, wild applications. Uh, for example, here, just to so show you the example of the carburization uh, process. So another software called TC Prisma is quite a young uh, software tools uh, to simulate the principal mechanics. So we are in another kind of model, uh, model called uh, Lucretian model. So we can consider concurrent uh, Lucretian growth uh, dissolution and the crossing process. It's based on the Langer Schwartz uh, theory, so it's a mean field approach. Uh, but we still we can use up arbitrary thermal history and the multiple application sites uh, to simulate the precipitation uh, multiple phases uh, at the different location sites. So either the grand boundary for thinner painting uh, effect or within the uh, with the bulk to simulate kind of strengthening, precipitation strengthening uh, effect. So information that provide phase fraction every composition in the precipitate matrix uh, and the particle size distribution of uh, pre different precipita precipitates. So all these information will be very helpful for if you build up our strengthening models uh, to simulate the mechanical, pro mechanical properties uh, and optimize the heat treatment history to achieve the goal of uh, different uh, mechanical uh, properties. So that's what we'll think about. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna uh, we're gonna do in the future. So in the left side is what we we already have right now. We have different modules, uh, like diffusion module and a precipitation module. So we try to build up more modules in the future, uh, like introduce more effects, like a stress effect and and others. And uh, we also provide the data optimization kind of module that would be helpful for users to develop their own databases uh, using kind of a sophisticated uh, optimization algorithm. And we also provide SDK tools for users. So if you want to build up your own model based on our uh, uh, kind of data information, you can do that, okay? So of course we still, uh, pro still keep uh, develop uh, different uh, databases uh, like thermodynamic connect. And in the future we want to build up more like other property database, like viscosity and uh, elastic uh, constants, et cetera. So on the other hand, we want to provide more kind of model uh, libraries, like uh, computational method, uh, computational um, material design process, structure property model libraries for different alloys, like steel, nickel base, alloy alloy alloys, and the titanium alloys. And uh, we also want to kind of uh, develop some more modules for application oriented for different processings, like steel making 
and casting. Let's just assemble all these modules within, embedded into Thermocalc. Then we can, can assemble all different modules to uh, simulate application-oriented uh, uh, fast processes. Okay. So for the ongoing work, we uh, get more uh, get more involved in the property visualization optimization uh, applications. So for property perspective, we provide more property that user can use to do the calculations like uh, phase transition train force, uh, the new developed models like interface energy and the crossing rates that we can use this information. User can do the calculation to get this information, okay? And in the future, users can also can be used to develop their own models that based on, like, like a, for example, a Python script. So if you write a Python script, you can use our software to get all the information uh, from the ThermoCAC and build your own model. So visualization, we provide more kind of visualizing tools, like for example, heat, tool, heat map uh, in the left side, or a contour map in the right side. So from this information, you can just uh, design the kind of a design window based on this uh, diagram to get the uh, information. And also we try to get some uncertainty kind of analysis. So if you wanted to do some sensitivity analysis, you can use this tool to get this uh, information. So, of course, database is very important. So that's why we trying to do more database uh, development for that. From nickel base, uh, titanium uh, steel, and also move to oxides and uh, slags, et cetera, okay? So database development is very critical and it's very difficult. Actually, if you look at the nickel, it's a really, really version nickel database. We have uh, 20 elements for alloy and three elements for gas. So if you look at the binary ternary system, it's a very big uh, number for that. So oh, usually we try to focus on some nickel, pure nickel, tiny nickel region uh, uh, to the database. But if you move on to the, the for example, high entropy alloys, you cannot do that. You have to uh, uh, assess the whole composition range. That's a big task. So right now we provide high entropy alloy alloys for fitting elements, so in that case we assess all the binary system for full composition range. So some challenges for the database. For example, com first one is complete, completeness of the database. So for, I just mentioned that this database development is a very uh, difficult task. So if you look at the ICM diagram, you have a, a bunch of the binary and the ternary system, but we cannot collect all of them we can only collect some, just part of them. So how to choose this one? So it's uh, very uh, critical. So other challenges the composition temperature dependent data. So we need a good quality data for that. Uh, unfortunately, we usually, we, right now, we still don't have that much information about that. So industry collect data is a multi-component system, but we cannot directly use that. We, based, we build our database based on binary ternary, and then we use that to predict the multi-component system. So we cannot actually directly use that either, directly to build our database, as, or rather than we use that as a validation to do that, okay. So low high temperature, temperature data is very difficult to get. Low temperature is the diffusion is very slow, so we will not allow it's really really equilibrium. High temperature sometimes have contamination and orientation, etc., to uh, cause the problem. Okay. So uncertainty is that it's all the big issue. So sometimes we know some we have some issue, some feeling about the uncertainty in final eternity, but we don't know how to propagate this uncertainty to propagate to multi common system. So hopefully you guys have some information about based on statistics that can help us to understand this one. So because it extended to high component system is highly nonlinear behavior, so we really don't know how to address this issue in the multi-component system. Okay. So good quality uh, data from 
commodity common system. So if you collect all the data from an in industrial or public domain, so we don't really know what quality of this. So we hope that in the, f in the future we have a society to develop some kind of standard or benchmark kind of algorithm system that we can follow uh, to uh, validate our databases, okay? So of course, the experiment is how, how do we define is good or bad. So that's something we just listed here. So hopefully we have some committee or something to have some standard, to set some standard for us to see, okay, uh, what kind of data is we need. So let's do, here we list some, some of the specifics about what we need, really need for our database. Like, uh, is it rich equipment or not? It can reproduce reproducibility or not? Is accurate or not? So liquid acid examples, if it's a boron, if I have a boron in the system, actually we can, just a very small amount, we can re reduce the, the uh, increase the liquid acid quite a lot. So what, uh, how accurate is that, that it is? And uh, for model common system, it's so accuracy, and the com contamination is a big issue, especially for high temperature uh, uh, experiments. So open on the closed system, so especially for some of the volatile system and the incongruent vaporization. So hopefully for the data infrastructure, we can get all this information, okay? So we hope that we can get a benefit from other data infrastructure. So like for example, like Chamat is a center for hierarchical material design. Uh, it's in partner with the materials uh, ASM MNGI toolkit, uh, toolkit program. So that, that's what we really emphasize that it can generate kind of prototype uh, system data. So that's what we really needed. And uh, we, we actively participate in this program to provide our software to the users, and then they can generate some prototype data for us to use to develop our databases. The other data sources that we are interested in is like uh, data uh, repositories. Like from, for example, from NIST, the they have experimental data repositories, especially for diffusion, thermodynamics, and uh, mechanical properties database. That's what we really need. And hopefully you, you guys here can help us for all these data, okay. Okay, to summarize, uh, CAFOD is a phase-based approach uh, traditionally, traditionally it's for thermodynamic and physical information, but now it's uh, uh, beyond this thermodynamics. We provide all other information. So we keep working on software and the databases, and we face a lot of challenges, also, of course. So hopefully, uh, the other data infrastructures can help us a lot uh, on this to address this issue. Okay, thank you for your attention.